We've now come to the student and postdoc poster session. And our poster presenters have all prepared one slide, 60 second oral presentations for you. They've been encouraged to not try to condense their entire life or even their entire PhD into one slide and 60 seconds. So their goal is to give you a sense of what their poster is about and hopefully leave you wanting more so that in a moment when we head out into the lobby for beer and wine and poster viewing, you'll go to their posters, chat with them, and learn about what they're doing. Our first poster presenter is Charles Key, and Charles' poster is titled Frestum Point Nets for 3D Object Detection from RGBD Data. Charles. Uh, hi, everyone. This is Charles. Uh, I'm a fifth-year PhD student in Stanford AI Lab and Guibus Lab. Uh, in this work, we study 3D object detection. So 3D object detection is given RGBD input. We want to recover 3D bounding boxes of objects. Those bounding boxes would contain 3D dimensions and orientations, as well as 3D space location of objects. So this is a very important task for many application uh, in robotics. For example, for grasping or perception systems for self-driving cars. In our project, we designed a very novel 3D object detection pipeline that leverages both state-of-the-art 2D detectors as well as state-of-the-art 3D deep learning techniques. In the end, our system is able to achieve leading performance on standard autonomous driving benchmarks, the KIDI benchmark. So if interested, please come to our poster at the front of the gate uh, to learn more details. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Our next poster is by Changzhu, Changzhu Zhuang. Changzhu's poster is titled Toward Goal-Driven Neural Network Models for the Rodent Whisker Trigeminal System. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Chen Xu, a second-year PhD student in psychology department, advised by Daniel Yemings. Uh, my research focuses on applying artificial intelligence models to help explain neuroscience data. In the project I'm presenting today, my, uh, we propose an approach to building artificial intelligence models, especially deep neural network models, for whisker to geminal system, which includes a set of brain areas processing information from whiskers uh, for rodents. Whiskers are like eyes for the rodents. Based on experimental results, we, have, we began with the assumption that these brain areas are designed to recognize object shapes in the environment. And the, our hypothesis in this project is that uh, if we have a network designed to solve the same task, then they will have the same real responses uh, with the systems achieving the same task. We then explored four different families of the networks, each representing different hypotheses, scientific hypotheses about how information is created in this system. Finally, we showed that we can uh, distinguish these models uh, uh, when we have neural data and we are working on to get the neural data. If you want to know more information, please come to my poster. Thanks. Thank you, Shengshu. <laughs> Our next presenter is David Brian Lindell. David's poster is Single Photon 3D Imaging with Deep Sensor Fusion. So sensors which, capture, ah, sensors which capture 3D information are really useful for a variety of tasks uh, in autonomous vehicle navigation, remote sensing, consumer electronics, uh, and in many other applications. And the way that these typically work is you have an illumination source, you send light out into the scene, and then you measure the time it takes for that light to return to a detector. And given the speed of light, you can determine the range or the distance to various objects in your scene. Now, all these sensors are going to be limited by the amount of signal or the number of photons returning back to your detector from the illumination source. And this ultimately places a limit on your maximum range, the density of your acquired 3D point cloud, and your acquisition speed. And so to alleviate these limitations, we propose a method that uh, is robust and can acquire dense depth maps quickly uh, with only a single photon returning per spatial position. Uh, and so if you'd like to know more about this, see our results, our hardware, uh, and, and learn about our hardware prototype, come by the poster. Thanks. Thank you, David. <laughs> our next poster is by Ed Quigley. Ed's poster is Building a Simulatable Tree Model from Image Data. 
Hi, so we're interested in building a tree digital double for use in special effects. The idea is that if you have a movie, you only shoot some real footage with a real environment and then have a virtual version to do something unrealistic in. So the two parts of a digital double are modeling what a tree looks like and how it moves. And right now we're interested in the first part, what it looks like. And so we're putting some cameras on a drone, flying around and collecting images of one specific tree. Um, and then we're, we're, we're using some structure for motion techniques to build a 3D point cloud of that tree and using our 2D images and our 3D points uh, as a basis to build a simulatable model. So we're distinguishing sort of a bulk coarse part, which is sort of the thicker parts of the tree, and a, a finer part um, as, our, as our sort of two steps. The bulk part is well resolved by the 3D point cloud, and so we're fitting some simulation primitives to that, and from the primitives and the points building a mesh that we can uh, set geometry and texture for based on our points and our images. And then for the fine part, we are uh, exploring inverse rendering techniques to build separate 2D topologies. And if you ha are interested in that, you can come to the poster. Thank you. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Next is Eric Yi, learning hierarchical shape segmentation and labeling from online repositories. Eric. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Eric. I'm a fifth year PhD student supervised by Professor Leonidas Squibus. So in this project, when uh, given a 3D shape, we would like to segment the shape into fine-scaled parts, organize the parts into hierarchy, and label the parts with human-readable names. For example, uh, this car is uh, segmented into its components, which are given names like door and wheel, and the children a wheel, uh, tire, and rim. So this has very uh, many applications in computer vision, graphics, as well as robotics. Our main idea is to uh, use the large 3D repositories already present online, where artists tend to model shapes with parts and hierarchy. But different artists model shapes differently, so this data is highly inconsistent. Our approach could learn from this noisy and inconsistent data, uh, capture the common trends in how artists uh, model geometry and label parts. Um, as a result, we can hierarchically segment objects into fine-scale parts from different object classes. Please come to our poster to learn more. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Next is Jenny Jim. Jenny's poster is Improving Virtual Cloth Simulation by Learning from Data. Hi, um, my name is Jenny. I'm a fourth year student but, uh, with Professor Ron Fetko, and my interests are in computer graphics and AI, and specifically uh, cloth simulation. This slide covers uh, most of my uh, works in the past. And for example, I've worked on um, designing new simulation models and trying to augment a uh, lower resolution simulation result with higher frequency details. And also, uh, more currently, my main interests are trying to uh, build methods to help practical applications such as virtual dressing. There are a lot of challenges for uh, virtual dressing because first of all, a physical-based model are usually incomplete in capturing all the factors that are in effect in reality. And also, it is really hard to acquire a person's exact body shape in order to do a good simulation. And third, uh, it is really hard to get the class material parameters correct as well. And finally, um, a good simulation with a very high resolution can be very expensive and not very practical in terms of performance. And finally, as well, there are also like rendering problems that can be hard. So yeah, we've been trying uh, various approaches to address this problem. And yeah, come check out my poster if you're interested. Thank you, Jenny. Next is Jing Zhang, mapping mouse brain slice sequence to a reference brain without 3D reconstruction. Jing. Uh, in mammals, neurons project throughout the brain and modulate diverse functions. To study the actual neural network, we use histology to observe the brain tissues at a cellular level. However, this procedure is invasive and breaks topology due to cutting. Through image registration between a 3D model and histology, we can establish spatial correspondence and, and recover the original topology. This facilitates comparison and integration of different experimental results. Our research develops a framework that automatically builds pixel-wise correspondence between a sequence of 2D histological slices and a 3D reference. Since the accuracy of our framework is similar to an expert neuroscientist, we have successfully used our method to map multiple brain data sets to a reference volume. 
making multi-brain data analysis possible and adequate. If you want to learn more, come to my poster. Thank you, Jane. Next is Lynn Shao, motion-based object segmentation based on dense RGBD scene flow. Oh, hi, everyone. Uh, this is Lin Xiao. I'm a second year. Please advance to the next slide. Oh, sure. This is working. Um. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, this is Lin Shao. Um, I'm a second-year PhD student in Professor Jeanette's lab. Uh, my research interest lies in robotic uh, perception and manipulation. In robotic manipulation scenarios, robots are able to physically interact with the environment, thus induce, um, uh, autonomously induce uh, motions. This motion provides rich uh, visual signals that help that facilitate the better thing understanding. Um, our, in this project, we are providing a robot with a model that perceives the visual effects of its uh, interaction based on two consecutive RGBD images. Taking advantage that in robotic manipulation scenarios, a scene can uh, often consist a set of rigidly moving objects. Our model jointly estimates the, uh, uh, the 3D motion field known as a scene flow and the, and, and the segmentation of a finite number of objects and its trajectories. Um, we show our method outperforms, uh, we show our method, uh, for, if you are interested, uh, please go to our poster. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Next is Michael Bao solving the uncanny valley with muscle simulation for face tracking. Hey, my name is Mike. Uh, I'm with Professor Ron Fedko. Uh, I'm a fourth year PhD student. Um, so my research is in trying to solve the uncanny valley problem. Um, the, in visual effects, one of the major problems in creating a digital double is that the amount of work that it takes to track a face and then animate a face and to make it look realistic is very high. Um, so we want to solve that using facial simulation. Uh, in particular, we want to do quasi-static simulation, and we believe that it will be uh, extremely useful for visual effects. And just in general, uh, we want to push the idea of using uh, simulation and combining data with it. Uh, so if you're interested, stop by my poster, and we can talk more. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> Next is Mu Zhao. The poster is titled Lung Net a convolutional neural network model of non-small cell lung cancer evaluated on multi-institutional image data. Um, hello, um, I'm Muzo. I'm a research fellow at the um, Department of Radiology Medical School. And this is a collaborative research project that we are working on developing convolutional neural networks to predict um, lung cancer patient outcomes, like um, the survival. And we would like to um, uh, integrate deep learning techniques into medical imaging domain. And my interest is uh, interest, uh, into developing machine learning and um, uh, medical imaging applications. Uh, you're well, welcome to um, come to our poster if you are interested. Thanks. Thank you, Mu. Our next speaker is Nick Haber, learning to play with intrinsically motivated self-aware agents. All right, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I'm Nick Haber. I'm a postdoctoral fellow in Dan Yeaman's lab, and I'm talking about uh, joint work with um, Damon Routsa and, and Fei Fei Li, as well as, as Dan, who you just heard speak a bit ago. Um, so we're learning to play might be kind of a kind of a flashy title, but but what we're interested in overall is this idea of can we in realistic environments train an agent in order to gather data that can help it learn about the environment. That is, can we train a self-model that knows how to enrich its world model? And with that, can we sort of um, you know, learn how to, to, to see emergent behaviors arise um, that we might call, you know, in, in human terms, curiosity? Um, and we have all sorts of interesting applications in, in mind from kind of cognitive modeling to, to various parts of um, robotic simulation, um, ubiquitous computing, and, and medicine. And I'd be delighted to uh, chat with you all later about it. Thanks. Thank you, Nick. Our next speaker is Natish Padmanabhan, Accommodation Invariant Computational Near Eye Displays. Hi all, I'm Natish. I'm a third year PhD student uh, working under Gordon Wettstein in the Computational Imaging lab at, lab at Stanford. Our poster is about accommodation invariant near eye displays um, for virtual reality. 
In current generation VR displays, the optics are such that the user is forced to focus to a single sharpest focus plane, as you see in the top row. However, this causes a perceptual conflict known as the vergence accommodation conflict, which results in headaches, eye strain, and reduced visual clarity. We use point spread function engineering to resolve this conflict, as seen in the second row, allowing the user to freely focus to any distance with equivalent levels of sharpness. Uh, finally, we implemented this in the benchtop setup seen on the right and evaluated it with the user study to show that it actually works in practice. Come by our poster if you want to know more about focus cues. Thank you, Natish. Our next speaker is Srinath Sridhar, Understanding Hands in Action from Visual Data. Srinath. So everyday, simple everyday tasks, such as uh, laying out a table for a meal, uh, is tremendously complex and requires a lot of understanding, deep understanding of uh, how objects behave under manipulation. We humans are able to do such manipulation through our hands mostly, um, and it would be great if we could capture the dexterity of the hand and digitize this de dexterity so that we can create better robots, better augmented and virtual reality systems, and better human computer input systems. Our goal is to digitize human physical skill. What we've done is we've developed a bunch of different algorithms for, that can estimate the full 3D pose of the human hand in motion, hands interacting with objects, as well as we've shown how we can use these techniques to develop new computer input methods for gesture-based computer input. Our methods are very general. They, they work with commodity depth sensors, uh, and they work under clutter and different kinds of environments. To learn more, please stop by our poster, Understanding Hands in Action from Visual Data. Thanks. Thank you, Serena. Next is Vincent Sitzman, Unrolled Optimization with Deep Priors. Hi, I'm Vincent, and I'm a PhD student at Gordon Wettstein's group, and I'm working on building up <laughs> and I'm working on building <laughs> no worries. Um, and I'm working on building application specific cameras. And um, one of my oh thanks. Thanks. Um, and one of our uh, projects is um, about a class of problems called linear inverse problems. And these include a variety of problems in image processing we care about, such as deconvolution, but also medical imaging reconstruction, such as MRI reconstruction. And classically, there have been two kinds of approaches to this, like classic optimization approaches and recently deep learning approaches. And both of these have pros and cons. Classic optimization generalizes better between these different classes of problems, but deep learning is better at learning image statistics from, this, from data. And if you're interested in how we can actually build models that combine the structure of classic optimization algorithms with priors learned from data and with deep learning, then check out our poster. Thanks. Thank you, Vincent. Please join me in thanking all of our students, postdocs, and research fellows. And thank you for your attention and contributions all day today. To wrap up, we're going to bring Bill Daly, our conference chair, back on stage. I just wanted to thank all of our speakers and our audience. It's been a, a really exciting day, a lot of really great um, research. And it's not over yet. Please enjoy yourself at the reception and poster session. And thanks again for uh, coming and making this event a success.